I really don't know what to do next. I don't know whether I should proceed as originally planned months ago. I had planned to run this car without a standalone ECU. At least initially to see if it's possible. It looks like some people may initially be able to get the car running and then they have problems later on. A couple weeks later, a couple months later, the ECU starts throwing codes. And I don't want to run into that. The only reason I was originally doing that, again, is to see if it's possible. Because there are so many mixed reviews out there, whether you can do it, whether it's long term, not necessarily whether it's the right thing to do. I wholeheartedly believe that a standalone ECU is the right approach for longevity, for power, for drivability. If you have the means, the money, the know-how, you should go standalone. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to jump right to the standalone ECU. That is not saying that I don't think it's possible to run this car effectively without one. I just don't know. I don't know. But I'd love to hear from you. Have you been able to get your Lexus IS300 or 2JZ GE NAT car running and running well without throwing any codes using the stock ECU? This wasn't a decision that I took lightly. A big part of the lemon factor isn't just a matter of modifying cars, slapping on the parts, getting them installed, and enjoying the, the benefits of the additional power handling, uh, aesthetic appeal, whatnot. It's really about finding out if it's something that you want to take on yourself. So we test parts to see if the manufacturer's claims are accurate, see if you actually gain uh, additional power. We test it on the track to see how they actually perform in real world. We'll test them on the road as well. And we install them to find out if it's something that you would want to install yourself or if after watching the video you say, hey, it's just not worth it, it's too much for me. So it's really about learning what works, what does it specifically for you. And that's why I really wanted to see if we could make work this stock ECU with the turbocharger. I wanted to see if it was possible to either really prove it out or to prove that it's wrong. There are a number of aftermarket standalone ECUs that we could use on the 2JZ. And that's great. A lot of options, a lot of really good options. In making the decision for our project car, the 2003 Lexus IS300, I decided to go with the ECU Masters Emu Black. And while I was at it, I got the plug and play harness. One of the reasons why I chose the Emo Black is because of its compatibility with the automatic transmission. Ideally, I'd love to have a manual transmission and it does open up more options as far as standalone ECUs. That's not the main reason why I chose the Emu Black because ultimately I am going to make a change to our transmission of choice. I do not plan on keeping the OEM automatic transmission long term. We will be changing that out. But in the meantime, this will be compatible. And in looking at the options out there, the user interface, the amount of information available, and how to use the Emu Black from a tuning perspective is pretty plentiful. And that was important to me because I do plan on tuning this car myself. You'll see that there's a lot of electrical connections here, electrical components that if you've purchased the wiring harness, you won't need. So these components over here, we're not actually going to be utilizing, nor are we going to be utilizing these clips here. The base of the unit is this small but substantial standalone ECU. It does allow you to retain some functionality of the OEM ECU, specifically when it comes to the automatic transmission. And that's what makes this ECU flexible for those of you that do have the automatic. This is an aluminized case. It feels pretty substantial. We have our cables that will connect the ECU itself to our laptop when the time comes to tune it. 
and you do have a very nice laminated card that ident identifies all of the pinouts. So as you see up here, it's representing your pinouts. It's color coded. It gives a lot of details, a lot of great information. So it does come with all of the components you do need, whether you're going to wire it yourself or use the plug and play harness. So here's the plug and play harness. If you do opt to spend the money to purchase this, which I'm hoping is money well spent, again, you will have to wire all of this in yourself. If you're good at wiring, if you have the time, great. I'd rather not spend the time to recreate this myself. So this harness will connect into our OEM ECU. Then it will then connect into the EMU Black. And you see here, we have two sensor wires coming off. One, a wideband oxygen sensor. So this is the 4.9 LSU that comes with it. And then we also have an IAT, an intake air temperature sensor, that if you've seen in previous videos, I've already welded a bung onto the air intake tubing itself right before the throttle body. I would not take installing an aftermarket ECU lightly. There are very specific requirements. You could damage your car, you could damage the ECU that you spent a lot of, a lot of good money on in doing so. So make sure you read the directions, read it over again, go online, get information from various sources, make sure you fully understand what you're doing, why you're doing it. The first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the negative battery terminal. You don't want to install the Emo Black with the power connected. We are going to open up our OEM ECU underneath here. We will connect our harness. We have on the other end, our connections to the Emu Black. We're gonna put it right down here. We will make our sensor connections, the wideband oxygen sensor and the IAT sensor. And I have a feeling that this IAT sensor is not going to reach coming around there. So I might have to open this up and extend the wiring. Once we've made our connections, we'll have to tap into a Vacuum source. So here's our OEM ECU. We're still leaving it in there. We're still going to be using it. The plug and play will attach and connect in between these two connectors. Like I said, we'll still be utilizing the OEM ECU, especially for the automatic transmission, to control the automatic transmission. Now, hopefully, <laughs> maybe with a little heat on the wires, these can bend, this whole thing can bend down in place and I can get the cover back on. So, like I said, this is a nice size. It gives you a lot of options of where you can mount this, whether it's in the engine bay or within the ca you know, cabin itself. But I, I like this. It's also, it, this is a nice aluminized, so it's, Durable, rugged, or at least I hope so. It's not made out of plastic. And on the back here, you'll see your connectors here. This is just a plug for your computer connection. We'll pull that out, plug in our computer from here. Here is our map connection. So this is where the vacuum source is gonna come in. And then we have our two connectors, which we'll connect in right now. So I like these clips. These are pretty robust. They do give you a nice sense of security that everything is locked into place. We'll open that up. And lock that down. And we'll do the same with the other side. We have our harness hooked up. 
And that is going to the Emu Black, which is tucked in over in this corner here. We have two sensors coming out of there. One is for our oxygen sensor, the wideband LS 4.9 that comes with the kit. And then the other is for the IAT, the intake air temperature sensor. And then we also have our vacuum line running back to the Emu Black. So everything is connected from a hardware perspective. Now we get to move on to the fun stuff. And for that, we need to go in the house and crack open our laptop. To download the software, I'm going to the ecumaster.com website. At the top here, I'm gonna to go to support, then click on download. And under download, we're gonna find the official releases. I guess you can use the beta experimental versions, but we're gonna stick with the official releases. We'll scroll down and find the Emu Black. Here we are. And right at the top here, Emu Black Software Package version 2.169. You'll download that to your computer. In order to update the firmware, you'll need to have your laptop plugged in to the actual Emu Black, and then you can update it from there. I'm gonna to go to the top left here. I'm gonna to go to Downloads, and at the very top, there's a link here to the Emu First Start Checklist. So this is super important. They make a very big deal about making sure that you read through this before you start installing and really start your car. So we had the checklist, we had the software on our PC, we now need a base map. We'll scroll down for that. At the bottom here is base maps. It takes you to a Google Drive. We're gonna to go to the Lexus parallel harness only. And we'll see that there's a subfolder. We're looking at this one right here, the IS300-GS300 parallel harness. We'll download that, which I've already done. When you're connected via the USB cable, you want to go to the top left under File and Open Project. You want to select the base map that we just found. As you can see here, I already made an alteration to that base map. The only difference I've made so far is I've gone into the base map and I've adjusted the fueling and the fuel injectors under general because this had, I believe, 440 cc's. So I wanted to update those to the 250 cc's. I did start the car. When I started, I wanted to verify several of the outputs, including the idle ignition timing. So if you go to the actual map itself, you want to make sure that the ignition angle that it's calling for within the table is the same that you're actually seeing uh, on the car. Use a timing light to make sure to verify that. This is super, super important because if you don't have the base timing right, everything is gonna be off from there. We'll come back in the next video and we'll start tuning the car. I'll be street tuning initially and then we'll get it on the dyno, especially when it comes to some of the ignition timing uh, and some of the higher boost uh, areas where, you know, it's obviously safer to do it on the dyno, but we'll see what we can do actually on the street and then we'll find out how much power we're actually generating. But there's still a lot to do. With that said, I think we're done for today. I wanna to thank you very much for joining and until next time.